Good evening. Welcome to the 2021 annual meeting of the Land Trust of Falmouth. Keep. <laughs> I'll start over. Good evening. Welcome to the 2021 annual meeting of the Land Trust of Falmouth. People are still entering the meeting, but will begin at 7 p.m. We're going to have a toast at the end of the meeting, so make sure you have a drink handy. At 7 p.m., we'll open the meeting with a word from our president, Anne Marie Ranfola. Good evening. We'll be starting shortly. Welcome to the 2021 annual meeting of the 300 Committee Land Trust of Falmouth. Uh, people are still entering the meeting, but we'll begin shortly. We're going to have a toast at the end of the meeting, so make sure you have a drink handy. And uh, we'll open the meeting uh, shortly with a word from our president, Anne-Marie Ranfomo.
Hi everyone, Anne-Marie Runfola here, your 300 committee president. I'm out in the ocean working on seabird research this week for my day job, or else I'd be with you in real time to celebrate our 36 years of great work together. I'm excited for all the incredible accomplishments you're going to hear about tonight. You all played a role in helping us achieve our goals, even during this challenging past year and a half. So first and foremost, I want to thank you for believing that open space is key to our town's health and happiness, and then doing something about it. Here's to our staff, Jessica Rittenauer, Lucy Helfrich, Alex Zolo, and for this past year, our TerraCore staffer, Colleen Smith, our board of directors and committees, our volunteers, including stewardship volunteers like our trail crew, wildlife monitors, and volunteers who assist with monitoring and special projects on properties. Our outreach volunteers, like those who provided the Wayfinding Walk series and educational speaker events. Our nearly 2,000 members, individual, family, and business. Our funders and partners, with a special shout out to the town of Falmouth. Our landowners who preserved their land, Together, we are making a difference. Thank you all. Every three years, our boarded staff hold a retreat to create a strategic plan for our organization. We completed a spring retreat this year and have drafted our 2021 to 24 plan. We've identified a, num a number of community needs that we can continue or start to address through land conservation. We'll share the final plan with you when it's ready but here are some of the major themes. Firstly, we are still committed to acquiring land and helping our partners acquire land for permanent protection for all of us. Secondly, we'll continue to prioritize taking care of the land we already own or on which we hold conservation restrictions and help the town and other partners build capacity to do so as well. Thirdly, our education and outreach programs are more important than ever and we'll continue to expand these activities in the school system and throughout our community. We will also identify appropriate projects to make our town climate resilient and that will complement and support workforce and community housing, agriculture. We are committed to being welcoming and inclusive and we'll seek ways to ensure we are informed by and representative of the diverse and wonderful communities in Falmouth. With these ambitious goals, we'll have to prioritize, but we're prepared to push hard to achieve what we believe are critical actions to protect our environmental and human health and achieve a sustainable and beautiful Falmouth. To do so, we'll need your continued partnership. So don't go anywhere. Enjoy the meeting, stay in touch, and see you on the land. Thank you all. Cheers to you. Thank you uh, very much, Anne-Marie, for your greeting and for sharing the 300 committee's priorities with our members. Uh, first of all, I want to ask if everyone can hear me. If anyone can't, uh, please send a chat uh, to Tom, Tom Stone and he'll let me know. I'm Joanne Muramoto, Vice President of the 300 committee's Board of Directors. And as our president is away, it's my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's annual meeting. Now, before we begin, we have some housekeeping announcements. First, we have someone working behind the scenes in case you need help or have questions. If someone is having problems entering the Zoom meeting, please send a text to Tom Stone at 508-572-3554. If you're in the meeting already and are having problems, type your question into the chat window at the bottom of your screen. And Tom uh, or one of us will help you. Secondly, in our July email to members, Lucy Helfrich included a reminder about the annual meeting. And this included a link to the draft minutes of the 2020 annual meeting. Uh, now, I hope you've gotten uh, takeout dinners from our business members and are ready to enjoy our celebration. 
um, make sure that you have a cool drink uh, for a toast at the end of the meeting. Um, so I now call the annual meeting to order. If I could have the next slide, please. First, uh, we'd like to have a moment of silence to remember and honor Virginia Valiella. Virginia was a much loved member of our board of directors and an environmental leader who worked tirelessly to help the town's water and environment. She passed away this spring, but her legacy lives on in our hearts. We'll have a moment of silence to remember her. Thank you for the moment of silence and we'll now proceed with the annual meeting. First, uh, your input uh, as members is really important to us. So we have two polls for you um, to answer. Uh, the first poll is, uh, we'd like to find out about your involvement with the 300 committee. If I could have the next slide with the polls, po the first poll, please. Uh, the first question is in what way are in what ways are you involved with the 300 committee? Uh, you can check any and all of these categories and we have about 30 seconds. You can choose as many of the, these capacities as you wish. Okay, uh, the results of our first poll uh, are 85% um, uh, of you are 300 committee members. That's great. I think we'd like to get the remaining 15% of you as members. Uh, many of you are volunteers. 34% of you are volunteers. 26% of you are funders or partners. 11% uh, are on the 300 committee board. Thank you very much. 21% of you are serving on a committee or committees. And 6% of you, um, this is very exciting, are prospective future 300 committee members. Um, uh, so that's, uh, we'll keep an eye on, on you and try to figure out who you are. Um, we have a second poll question for you. So our second poll uh, asks, from what location are you joining us this evening? And this is a single choice. Just choose one, if you please. We'd like to know where you're calling in from. All right, the results of the second poll um, asking what location you're joining us from uh, this evening. 98% uh, of you are from Falmouth or elsewhere on Cape Cod and the islands. And 2% of you are somewhere else in New England. And uh, none of you are from elsewhere in Massachusetts or the US or outside the US. So thank you uh, very much for joining us um, on this beautiful evening. We really appreciate it. And uh, before we move on to uh, business, I'd like to express our board's appreciation 
This last year has been incredibly challenging for everyone due to COVID-19. Our staff, members, volunteers, committees, and supporters all deserve kudos for rising to meet this new challenge and for helping to us to get through this crisis while making Falmouth a beautiful place to live. Now, our next uh, item of business is to approve the minutes. If I could have the um, slide with the polls and approved minutes, please. Ah, okay, uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but that's, but that's okay. Our first order of business is to vote to approve of the minutes of the 2020 annual meeting. Lucy sent the minutes out to all members via email in case you wanted to review them. Are there any questions or discussion on the minutes? Uh, please put up any questions in the chat. If there are no questions or discussion on the minutes, uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as written? I move the minutes of the prior meeting. Thank you, Leonard. Leonard has made a motion to approve the minutes of the 2020 annual meeting. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tom. We've had the motion seconded. So um, we have a motion to approve the 2020 annual meeting minutes and a second, and we'll vote to approve the minutes using the poll. Uh, please answer quickly. <laughs> Looks like, um, let's see, we've got 88, we've got 65% of people voting. So please take the poll and um, indicate um, whether you approve the minutes of the annual meeting. Uh, the results of the uh, vote, uh, the poll uh, on approving the 2020 uh, minutes of the annual meeting, 88% um, uh, voted in to approve and 12% abstained. So the minutes of the 2020 annual meeting are approved as written. Thank you very much. Uh, now we have Nominations for board members and officers. And then, uh, so I'd like to introduce David Bailey, fellow board member and co-chair of our nominating committee. David will introduce our recommended slate of candidates for the board of directors and officers. Take it away, Dave, thank you. Thanks, Joanne. Not that it's not, not nice um, having you all here in my living room, but let's hope this is our last uh, COVID annual meeting. We'll follow the same procedures we used at our last annual meeting. The nominating committee will recommend six candidates for election to the 300 committee board of directors and all four officers of the trust. Voting will take place using the, um, the poll function that'll appear on your screen. As provided for in our bylaws, I'll call for nominations from the floor, which allows any member present to make a nomination. I'll go on to present the nominating committee's slate of candidates. We are equipped to accept nominations from the floor, but we hope members will follow tradition and bring any prospective candidate to the attention of the nominating committee well in advance of the annual meeting, which would give us time and opportunity, <clears throat> excuse me, to match the skills of that person to an opening on the board. Nominations for officers and board members from the floor are now open and will be for the next minute or so. 
using the Q&A function. We'll need your name and the name of your nominee. Both must be current members of the 300 committee. In the meantime, I'll, commit, I'll continue with the committee's slate of nominees. For board of directors, four of the six nominees, Alex Lancaster, Stephanie Madsen, Susie goodman Halstein, and me, Dave Bailey, are current members of the board seeking re-election. The nominating committee recommends their re-election. These nominations are three-year terms to the board of directors. In addition, there are two vacant seats on the board, one two-year term, one three-year term. As many of you know, 300 committee member and tireless treasurer Gary Vostok will be leaving both positions this year. Gary's been a tremendous asset <clears throat> to the 300 committee in both positions and his unique combination of talents will never be duplicated, but we are incredibly fortunate to have found a candidate, Richard Dotson, who has agreed to serve as treasurer if elected. Richard brings his own unique skill set to the table. He served in the State Department as a diplomat for 25 years, went on to the Department of Defense, where for 13 years he worked both domestically and internationally with stations including Heidelberg, Sarajevo, and the Pentagon. In his retirement, Richard has been busy with community volunteerism, including serving as treasurer of the Wakoit Bay Reserve Foundation. It's with great pleasure we nominate Richard Dotson to a three-year term on the Board of Directors. Our final nominee for the Board of Directors is dedicated 300 committee volunteer, Marcia Macedo. Marcia is an ecosystem ecologist with the Woodwell, Woodwell Climate Institute, excuse me, the Woodwell Climate Research Center. Her current research focuses on the impact of agricultural expansion and intensification in the Brazilian Amazon and Cerrado. In addition to her volunteer work here with our outreach committee, Marcia volunteers for Cape Cod Rivers Observatory conducting water quality monitoring. Marcia is a US born daughter of Brazilian parents and brings with her a commitment to inclusion and diversity she looks forward to aiding our efforts to more effectively serve underrepresented members of the community, particularly the many Brazilian and Portuguese emigres who now call Cape Cod their home. It's with appreciation for her past contributions and great anticipation to her future guidance, we nominate Marcia Macedo to a two-year term on the board of directors. I have seen no nominations from the floor and the committee slate has uh, received a second from uh, member Tom Stone. Please vote for members of the board of directors using the survey function on your screen. The, the slate for board of directors has been elected. Congratulations to all. As I mentioned earlier, the term of all officers of the trust expire this year and all but the treasurer will continue in their post for another two years if elected. These positions require a huge commitment of time and effort and we're greatly indebted to those who occupy them. With gratitude for their vision and dedication, we nominate Anne-Marie Runfola as president, Joanne Muramoto, as Vice President, Alexandra Lancaster as Clerk, and Richard Dotson as Treasurer of the 300 Committee. 
There have been no nominations from the floor of the committee slate has received a second from Tom Stone. Second. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Please vote for the officers using the function on your screen. The slate has been elected as presented. Congratulations and thank you. Welcome to our new members. Next on the agenda is Gary Vostok, our treasurer with our financial reports. Take it away, Gary. Okay. Uh, um, yes, let me start again. The 300 Committee Land Trust, Inc. is a not-for-profit corporation. It's a 501c3 organization. Its year-in is September 30th, 2020, uh, referred to as FY20 in the slides that you'll be seeing. Uh, the financial statements are audited by Liam, Mason, Bolger, and company who issued an unqualified or clean opinion which basically means that the financial statements do present fairly the financial position, the financial position of the organization. Uh, the first slide, if you could bring it up, please. Great. Um, for the FY20, the sport and revenue that we received was $767,500. Of that amount, memberships, revenues from memberships was $255,160. 33% of the total. And that membership revenue basically uh, financed or funded 75% of our operating expenses outs other than land acquisitions and conservation restriction acquisitions. So it's a very important source of revenue for us. Uh, we have grants and contributions of $245,402, which is 32% of the total. And this revenue source is principally driven by fundraising for uh, to re basically to replenish cash uh, for either past land or conservation restriction acquisitions that have taken place or raising cash for future acquisitions. Also included in grants and contributions is requests that we received. Donated stock was $26,269. It was 4%. And we just show this separately because it's a neat tax advantage way of, of giving. And so, you know, please consult your tax advisor regarding this. Investment income was $240,669, which was 30% of the total. Uh, this amount, uh, we had a very good year on the investments, but again, this amount can oscillate one year to the next based upon the whims of the stock market. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, the FY20 expenses were $754,222. Um, of that amount, program, ex program services were $652,320. That's 87% of the total monies that were outlaid or expenses that we incurred in the past year, 87% of them was for program expenses, such as stewardship, conservation restrictions and land acquisitions to which the 300 committee purchased or conservation restrictions and land acquisitions titled by other organizations to which the 300 committee participated in. Fundraising, uh, the expense of fundraising was $31,639, which represented just 4% of our total expenses. And general administration, the running of the office basically, uh, was $70,260 dollars, which was just 9%. So to summarize the expenses, 87% uh, of our FY20 expenses went to program services. Uh, 
The next slide, please. Great. So in, in the profit world, revenues minus expenses is kind of like the net income of the company or the net profit of the company. In the not-for-profit world, revenues minus expenses, that difference is referred to as the net increase in assets. Okay, and, and so the, the excess of our revenues over the expenses for the year ended September 30th, uh, 2020 was $13,278. If we take that increase in our net assets and add it to the net assets that we had at the beginning of the year, and again, what net assets is, is basically the assets of the company as of September 30th, 2020. And if we increase that by 13,000, that gives us the ending uh, net assets that we have. If we go to the next slide, we'll actually we'll see the details of this. Okay, so here's the, the, our net assets, often referred to in the profit world as your balance sheet. Uh, so the first one that we have is, the first asset that we have is our operating funds. Uh, for FY20, it was $259,936. And this basically is the cash that's available to meet operational needs, excluding uh, conservation restriction and land acquisitions. The endowment funds as of FY20 was $2,177,820. Uh, what makes this up is basically, is not basically, what makes this up is investment securities that we have and is to provide long-term financial stability uh, to meet our stewardship, the stewardship obligations, uh, defending conservation restrictions, and supplementing operation operations if so needed. Uh, going down, the next item, the next asset to which we have is the capital land fund, is one million nine hundred twelve thousand two hundred thirty-three dollars. And what this is all about, this is basically our working capital fund. Um, is monies that we have basically all in the form of cash, principally uh, money markets and a one-year uh, bank CD that we have to purchase uh, conservation restrictions and to make land acquisitions, whether titled by, into the name of the 300 committee or assisting other organizations in, in those type of acquisitions. Um, once we make the acquisition, we then go out, do fundraising, to basically to replenish that account. Uh, we have some pledges and bequests receivables of $100,000. We have conservation land of $2,870,299. So what happens when we find a parcel that meets the objectives and criteria for land conservation uh, to be purchased by the 300 committee, uh, an appraisal is done, uh, the purchase price is then uh, uh, paid for that land. And then uh, once the conservation restriction is placed on the property, the land gets reassessed based upon a conservation value, which obviously is a lower value than what was previously developable land. And the land is written down, the, is written down to that conservation value. So that 2,870,000 is the conservation value of the various land holdings to which we have. Uh, building improvements were 495,200 and I'm sorry, uh, 495,422 dollars. And what represents this is some equipment, but mostly it's the uh, improvements that we have at the various land sites. Could be parking lots, it could be walkways, handicap accessibility, etc. And and those improvements are in fact appreciated over their relative lives, meaning that the original cost a little bit. Of, each and every year is expensed, lowering the asset, increasing in expense for that consumption of that value. There are some other assets of $3,703, very small. Basically what makes that up is expenses that were paid in advance of their consumption. So as of September 30th, 2020, the total assets to which we owned was $7,819,413. We had some liabilities of nine hundred uh, of three hundred ninety four thousand one hundred and seventy seven dollars, and of that number, uh, three hundred ninety one thousand one hundred seventy seven dollars is a note to which we have on a land acquisition. So land was purchased where uh, the three hundred committee 
is basically paying $200,000 each year, uh, both in interest and principal, uh, toward that acquisition. Um, and then finally, if you take your total assets minus the liabilities, that difference is referred to as your net assets, which is $7,425,236. So to summarize the year, number one, we are um, solvent, meaning that we do have more assets and liabilities. Even if we were to subtract out the conservation land, which would never be sold, uh, we're still uh, solvent, uh, very much so. Number one, we're liquid. We do have the ability of paying our bills as they come due. There's no issue with liquidity. Um, and we do have more revenues coming in than expenses. And the other criteria, the last criteria, is that number one, we are effective and efficient in accomplishing our mission. And again, all of this is basically due to the <laughs> highly skilled and dedicated staff and board of directors. and and, and, and thankfully for the membership and volunteers that we, we have that has pulled all of this off. Um, so that's my uh, report. Uh, next up is Jessica. Thank you, Gary. I'm gonna advance mm -hmm. here to the annual uh, year in review, excuse me. Uh, good evening, I'm Jessica Rittenauer. Thank you all for joining us tonight for the 300 Committee's annual meeting. We are grateful for your participation in this meeting and for your support as members, donors, and as volunteers. I'll open up the year in review by sharing a few highlights of community partnerships and a summary of three land protection projects totaling 21 acres completed land preserved since last year's annual meeting. I'll provide a brief update on the Florence Sylvia Woodland campaign, and we'll then hand the baton over to Lucy Helfrich to share the outreach year in review, followed by Alex Zolo with the stewardship review. <clears throat> First, I want to emphasize that the 300 committee exists and thrives because of the Falmouth community. Our members, volunteers, and partners are Falmouth-based or have strong Falmouth connections. And we are growing and achieving our mission because of all of you. Support from our members and volunteers makes us stronger as an organization, and we are grateful. The first community partnership I'd like to highlight relates to our business members. With now over 60 members, this part of our program continues to provide increased donations for operations and in-kind services for legal work and stewardship. We encourage all of you to review the business member listing that is frequently updated on our website. And we encourage you to patronize and thank these businesses for supporting open space conservation in Falmouth. Many of you will recall that a special group of donors provided $295,000 to the 300 committee um, just within the last couple of years. This was in support of the Kunameset Greenway Heritage Trail project. Uh, the $295,000 was transferred from the 300 committee to the town of Falmouth over a year ago for the accessible river loop trail and the trail connections from the parking area that will be established on John Parker Road with the accessible river overlook. We are thrilled to see the tremendous progress that the Falmouth Conservation Department has led um, with contracted work for this site. We give tremendous thanks to Betsy Gladfelder, Mark Kaspersik, Jennifer Lincoln, and the entire Falmouth Conservation Commission for moving this amazing river restoration and accessibility project forward. Betsy expects that they'll be ready for a grand opening in October of this year. Beyond the gateway to the Greenway area, the 300 Committee and the Falmouth Conservation Commission are partnering on a signage program to increase visibility and awareness of the entire Kunameset Greenway Heritage Trail. The photograph you see here featuring one of the new uh, trail signs that the Conservation Department installed. Uh, we have Mark Kasprasik of Conservation and Chris Bennett um, taking a moment um, to you know, share one of these signs. Uh, we hope you'll take notice of these throughout town and enjoy um, a wonderful hike 
also just a brief mention, our website was updated um, recently with help from Dina Pandya uh, and Lucy Helfrich, uh, Colleen Smith, our TerraCorps uh, member, and Alex Zolo for the maps of the Kunamesic Greenway Heritage Trail. It's a wonderful resource. Uh, we encourage you to use the website access those trail maps and enjoy exploring this fantastic asset for Falmouth. Um, again, this year, after several years, uh, the 300 committee partnered with the Marine Biological Laboratory for the Falmouth Forum. Uh, former 300 committee board member and stewardship committee chair Dave Mount provided very thoughtful leadership and guidance as the 300 committee forged their partnership with the MBL for this year's event, Wildlands and Woodlands, a vision for sustaining forested and natural landscapes. Um, we had worked with uh, Allison Leshen, our extraordinary, our extraordinary volunteer, excuse me, who we've worked with on several video projects. Uh, she was supported this year by Alex Lancaster in filming uh, a lovely piece at uh, Shallow Pond Woodlands um, featuring David Foster of the Harvard Forest and Zoe Cardone of the Marine Biological Lab. I'm going to share this video with you now. It's a brief uh, four minute video and it really captures uh, the essence, we believe, of the Wildlands and Woodlands message. Well, it's fabulous to be here. This is really quite a striking place. Uh, the forest is beautiful. The bird sounds are great. The landscape is diverse. Today, you know, the earth is really in a crisis and we all have to do everything we can to avert it. And that means we need to act globally to alter the shifts that are occurring in the climate. But that work ultimately needs to start right here, right where we live, right in our backyard, um, working with local organizations to protect land and to allow the earth to really work well for us and for nature. Uh, the 300 Committee Land Trust was formed in 1985 with a goal of preserving land in all villages and all areas of Falmouth. We've preserved 23% of Falmouth's land area, over 2,500 acres of land. Uh, the property that we're at today, the Shallow Pond Woodlands, was preserved in 2017. Permanent conservation of this 70 acres would create a 183 acre area because of the connections with Brivogel Ponds Conservation Area and the Wald Fender Conservation Area. The beautiful thing about this forest and so much of the forest and woodlands across New England is that they're relatively young and the trees are growing rapidly, taking in carbon dioxide, converting that into wood and material that gets into the soil as organic material, and so really make the earth a major site for the storage of carbon, taking it out of the atmosphere and holding it from accumulating in the atmosphere where it can change the climate. So when I walk into this gorgeous landscape, what I see on a day like this is it is taking CO2 out of the atmosphere and it is storing it as carbon in the trees. 
and it's also going down below ground and I think that often we don't think about that. We're used to walking around up here and we see these gorgeous towering trunks of trees around us. But if you think about it, really that much stuff, all of that tree trunk, you could be turning that upside down, putting it down below ground. There's that much root material down below ground. These second growth forests will continue to grow like this for a century, two centuries perhaps, maybe even longer. And the trees will just get larger and larger and the ecosystem will continue to work to reduce the rate of climate change. The fabulous thing about the work here in the town of Falmouth by the 300 committee and other organizations is that you've got a big goal, which is to conserve at least 30% of the town. That's a scale that's really important for what we're talking about. If every community would just pitch in and think about what can be done to improve the lives of people who live there, but also generate benefits for the rest of the world, we'd all be in a much better place. These landscape pieces that are connected are just so inspiring for someone like me who thinks about how landscapes work and how we keep them working both to keep them going, keep nature moving along, and to sustain human beings. Thank you so much for your patience. We know when we do these Zoom meetings that sometimes our technology runs smoothly. I really appreciate your patience. We're back. Um, I'm gonna work really quickly through the land um, updates. We had, as I mentioned, 21 acres preserved since last year's annual meeting. Running through them in order, uh, back in November of 2020, we closed on the Lowell Woods land donation. Uh, this is a project we worked on for a couple of years, 7.8 acres uh, donated to the 300 committee by Vicki Lowell uh, and her late husband, Pete Lowell. The conservation restriction permanently protecting this land is held by the compact of Cape Cod Conservation Trust. Uh, we were fortunate to have a masked and socially distanced walk with Vicki um, sharing you know, some of the special highlights of the property. Um, this is a lovely walk. It is adjacent to BB Woods. So again, it really enhances existing conservation land by adding additional trail and additional acreage to a wonderful preserved area in Falmouth. The next project completed was at the end of December. On December 31st, uh, 2020, we closed on the Pariah Dog Farm Conservation Restriction Purchase. This was a 10.2 acre purchase funded in part by the USDA Agricultural Land Easement Program. They provided $133,000 and 300 committee donors and funding from our Opportunity Fund provided $63,000 in private financing uh, to help this deal close. There was also a conservation land tax credit program. Uh, contribution that the Compact of Conservation Trust was instrumental in helping us bring to the table for this deal. Um, we are so appreciative for Matt Churchill and for his patience and dedication in working through this entire process with us. Uh, what we have is a lovely preserved uh, farm 
with 98% of the area in prime agricultural soils. There's a farm stand, so members of the Falmouth community can visit the farm stand and enjoy the terrific produce from this farm. So we're thrilled that we completed that. It was a special New Year's Eve um, acquisition. Lastly, on the land acquisition side, uh, Don and Janet Mahler, in February of 2021, completed a donation of three acres of land. Um, this was a very meaningful and special gift of land. Don and Janet Mahler um, shared with us that they were making this land gift in honor of Virginia Valiela and her husband, Ivan. Uh, we were able to share um, this wonderful message and news of three acres conserved uh, with Virginia and Ivan. This land is adjacent to the Valiela conservation restriction. So you'll see the Mahler property is outlined in green. The Valiela conservation restriction is 1.2 acres adjacent. And then we have an additional conservation restriction, which is 0 0.95 acres. That was conveyed by Ellen Hawker. Uh, that property is now owned by Doug Brown. This is a terrific corridor of land right with frontage on the on the Shining Sea Bikeway in North Falmouth. And again, the donation that the Maulers made also enhanced a truly special conservation and wildlife corridor in Falmouth. Before I close, I want to leave you with a with an update on the Florence Sylvia Woodland. We announced this land acquisition at last year's annual meeting, and you'll recall that we closed um, in March of 2020. We are well on our way towards the $650,000 fundraising goal. Uh, the town of Falmouth um, has just approved a $200,000 grant from the Community Preservation Fund. That was through a unanimous vote of town meeting on June 28th, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, 300 committee members, uh, neighbors to the property, and a number of uh, you know North Falmouth donors have helped us get um, to $418,000 in private funds raised. This does include a 40, or excuse me, a $40,000 matching challenge. Uh, so what I want to highlight this evening is that um, the 300 committee has just over $31,000 to go uh, to reach the $650,000 goal. Uh, we hope to raise this funding this year. Um, we will be making our final payment to Jerry Sylvia in the beginning of 2022. Um, as Gary had presented, this is uh, one of the outstanding projects that, that will be paid off. Um, again, our Opportunity Fund makes a tremendous difference in, able, in our ability to preserve these lands and to have flexibility working with landowners on payment schedules. Uh, so we thank you um, for your interest and for all the support that we've received for this great project. The trails are open. Uh, we just had a great walk out there earlier this week. We encourage you to visit our website again. There's a plant ID hike um, that's featured there for this specific property. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our Director of Program Services, Lucy Helfrich. Lucy has served in this role for 20 years and we had an opportunity to celebrate her very special anniversary this year in April. We are enormously grateful for her insights and her many contributions to the 300 committee's membership and outreach programs and for her expertise in supporting our overall land conservation mission. Lucy, take it away. Thanks, Jessica. Great job with your presentation. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you all. 20 years is a long time. Can't believe it. <laughs> um, but this last year has been a long year. And last year I said I hoped our Zoom annual meeting would be a one-time thing. Here we are at it again. In spite of many of us being Zoomed out, it's apparent that we've gotten pretty good at it. And going forward, Zoom will continue to play a useful role for us, although hopefully not another annual meeting, as Dave said earlier. That said, we miss seeing all of you in person and hope to connect more as things continue to open up. We have had opportunities over the last crazy year to interact with many of you outdoors with masks on. This has largely been thanks to our creative and dedicated outreach volunteers who embraced the 300 Committee's goal of getting people out on the land, recognizing that being outside in Falmouth's many beautiful open spaces was a really important way to combat stress, isolation, and COVID fatigue. Once we knew we could lead safe, socially distant walks for small groups, our team galvanized a core group of walk leaders and created a truly impressive eight-month hike schedule. 
So we were able, dur able during the pandemic to share Falmouth's special protected lands and the trail systems everyone loves. Next slide, please. Our specially named White Wayfinding Series started in October and continued through May. All of Falmouth's conservation areas with trails were featured at least once. Close to 80 hikes took place. These were led by Outreach's phenomenal walk leaders, by volunteer Mike Tucker, whose walks focused on birds, and by our brilliant and amazing TerraCorps member, Colleen Smith, who really focused on a younger audience. Thank you to all these folks who truly made a difference during the pandemic. Next slide, please. We now have a sh another short video. This one's only about a minute long, created by hike participant Andy Jablin from photos taken on a hike at Fry Vocal Ponds that also explored the neighboring Atlantic White Cedar Swamp. Since the hike took place in April of this year, once vaccinations were well underway, the participants elected to carry on without masks, a welcome change after a very long year. Can you please roll the video? Thanks again to Andy Jablon for that great video. Uh, next slide, please. We conducted other outreach activities during the last year, including our Anytime Pedal to Parcel cycling tour of Falmouth's open spaces during the last week of September. Beginning and ending at Andrews Farm, the route covered about 15 miles on the road and included nine different conservation areas. Our signs were posted at the conservation stops and cyclists could follow along with the ride narrative to learn more about the parcels along the way. Our outreach team also created a really fun scavenger hunt for Halloween at Bry Vogel, which attracted several young families. Everybody was assigned a time slot, they came in costume and they had a blast. It looks like 2021 will see a repeat event, but luckily and happily with fewer restrictions and more families. Next slide. On Zoom, we hosted a bunch of talks about one each month beginning in September and continuing through June. Through these talks, we, we literally reached hundreds of people. We learned about fishers from Mass Wildlife's Jason Zimmer and were enlightened about Osprey by Mass Audubon's Mark Verity. Mike Tucker presented several highly informative, beautifully illustrated talks about birds, birds of the Upper Cape, owls, spring migrants, songbird identification, and local shorebirds. Mike has developed a large and loyal following, which was apparent in the crowds who signed on. T3C hosted two outreach book clubs on Zoom, led by volunteer Kathy Kligler. Readers loved both books, Wesley the Owl and The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating. The discussions were well attended and engaging. We are so grateful to everyone who presented for us on Zoom, and we're also grateful to everyone who attended our virtual educational programs. Next slide. Looking at the rest of the summer, we have a couple things coming up. An end-to-end -end marine trail hike. This is a pretty ambitious proposition, but well worth it. That'll take place on Monday, July 26th with a rain date of Wednesday, July 28th. This will begin early in the morning and end around one o'clock with a swim, hopefully, in Cruise Pond. 
Also, our outreach team is planning a couple of fun events for families, flower pounding at the end of July and all about pollinators in August. As always, check your inbox for 300 committee emails. Details of upcoming events will also be posted on the website. Next slide. Finally, a note about the Falmouth Road Race. We continue to benefit from this annual sporting tradition in town through our involvement in the Numbers for Nonprofits program in which runners choose to run for charity. This is our 17th or 18th year, not sure which, as part of this program. And while there are more than 160 nonprofits that benefit, the 300 committee is just one, is one sorry, of just seven Falmouth-based nonprofit organizations. So, with us, the money stays in Falmouth, which is great. The road race has become a great funder for us, fundraiser for us. This year, we have 11 runners who will run and sweat along the seven mile race course on August 15th in support of open space in Falmouth. Hats off to them. And hats off to all of you, our friends and members for your continued support of our mission and your participation in our programming. Wishing you all a wonderful rest of the summer. It always goes too fast. And we hope you'll continue to get out to enjoy Falmouth's many special places. And now I'm pleased to hand the program over to Alexandra Zolo, the 300 Committee's fabulous stewardship coordinator. Thank you, Lucy. And good evening. As Jessica shared earlier in the night, so much of our success as an organization and for our stewardship in particular has been the result of Oh man, I was muted. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you, Lucy. Um, as Jessica shared earlier in the night, so much of our success as an organization and for stewardship in particular has been the result of our wonderful and strong partnerships. Next slide. This year, the 300 committee entered into a partnership with TerraCore with a mission to prepare and mobilize emerging leaders to help communities gain access to and to conserve land for people in nature, working with this group has been a privilege. Through this partnership, Colleen was selected to serve with us as stewardship support for the 2020 to 2021 service year. Colleen was with us full time Monday through Friday and quickly became an integral part of our team. With her help, and keen eye, we were able to improve our processes in many areas, including updating Google with addresses and descriptions of conservation areas for improved navigation and access. Since January, her efforts have received over 100,000 hits on Google Maps. That is a lot of people that have been able to access our properties from her help. Next. <clears throat> Additionally, with Colleen's help, we were able to revamp our monitoring program. We offered a virtual training that linked in over 50 volunteer stewards, 50 volunteers for stewardship. As I mentioned, we had this training that focused around our new monitoring software that is called Landscape Conservation Software. This new tool helped our volunteers to conduct their site visits and track their visits on their phone with an app. That app was then able to directly update to our database so we can better access them, take care of them, check out any major snags along the way, um, and really better respond to the needs of the land. With Colleen's help and with all of the dedicated core of volunteers that helped with this effort, we are, we've begun a huge movement that is, makes our whole stewardship team better. Next. Another fun and rewarding partnership that we had this past year was an event that we co-hosted with the Association to Preserve Cape Cod. Together we hosted Doug Tallamy, a leading entomologist who taught us about the importance of native species in our ecosystems and how we can bring them home into our yards. We discussed both of his books during the pandemic, virtually on book clubs, and then it was really rewarding to be able to hear from the man himself, deliver his uplifting message of conservation and hope for the future. That event had over 500 people 
register for it. Next. Another partnership, the 300 committee has been able to benefit from the generous donation of time and effort from Gradient, an environmental engineering firm out of Cambridge. They chose us as the beneficiaries for a bro pro bono project to update and share the stories of the Moraine Trail in Falmouth. Since February, we have had the honor of working alongside their capable, fun, and wonderful staff to help create an updated Moraine Trail map that accurately shows access and parking for the trails, as well as a virtual story map component. This part will tell the stories of some of the trail's various stakeholders. The large scale map will be available on our website and in hard copy shortly, and the story map will be rolled out next month. Thank you to everybody who has helped in this project, from the mountain bikers, to the geologist, filmmakers, students, artists, all of you. Thank you. Next. And to wrap up with a note of gratitude to all of our volunteers, I would like to give a shout out, especially to Charlie Peterson and our trail crew who helps keep our trails clear and responds at a moment's notice to any stewardship needs. To our stewardship committee for your dedication and monthly meetings and guidance, and all of the other partners that we've been able to work with this year, including Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and Barnstable County AmeriCorps Cape Cod. Thank you, and I will pass it back to Joanne. Thank you, uh, Alex, and everyone for your reports. Uh, we have amazing staff and committees, and it's part of why we can accomplish so much. Now, we'd like to hear from you again, so we have another poll for you. This one follows on the heels of our stewardship report. So the poll question is, how has COVID-19 influenced your feelings about the importance of spending time in open space and experiencing nature for your own quality of life? We have about 30 seconds. Okay, the uh, poll has closed and the results uh, are that 67% um, of you uh, feel that spending time in open space and experiencing nature um, is more important than before. And 33% of you said that your feelings were about the same as before. Um, so that you know, these results point to the uh, growing awareness or realization that open space plays a really important part in our quality of life and mental health as well. So thank you very much for the uh, poll results. Uh, now uh, we're going to be moving on now to our favorite part of the meeting where we, we recognize others. Now, first, before we go any further, uh, I'd like to acknowledge Mark Robinson of the Compact of Cape Cod Conservation Trusts. The Compact is a consortium of Cape Cod Land Trusts and the 300 Committee is a member of the Compact. Mark provides us with invaluable advice and technical assistance, and he's part of the reason why we have and why we can achieve so much. So thank you very much, Mark. Now, uh, for our awards, um, all 300 committee members are valued members, but every year we recognize some of those who have done outstanding work in helping us with our mission. 
here is a list of 300 committee awards. And first of all, Leonard, I'm going to hand it off to you to tell us about a new special award. Hi there, everybody. Next year, we're going to see you all in person. And I hope I will encounter you along the trails and here and there between now and then. I'm going to talk about the Wise Owl Award. You re may remember that at last year's annual meeting, we created a new award called the Wise Owl Award. The first recipient was Virginia Valiela, a longtime 300 committee board member who also served the Falmouth community in numerous leading positions for over 40 years. As Joanne has mentioned, unfortunately, Virginia died earlier this spring after a long illness. To honor her memory, the 300 committee board has decided to name this award after Virginia henceforth to be known as the Virginia Valley Ala Wise Owl Award. What follows is a description of a wise owl. A wise owl is prudent and sensible, as well as experienced and well-informed. He or she possesses and demonstrates wisdom and discernment. I like that, wisdom and discernment. That description fits Virginia to a T. We intend this to be an, an occasional award, not one necessarily that we will make every year. So we will make this award from time to time. So thank you all for your support. And of course, so much th thank yous to Virginia. Now, uh, Lucy will present the Invaluable Volunteer Award. Great, thanks Leonard. Thanks Joanne. This year, we are delighted to present the Invaluable Volunteer Award to someone who has, become a, who has been a true gift to the 300 Committee's outreach and education programs. You all surely know him by now, Mike Tucker. Mike has an incredible catalog of bird knowledge, field experience, and gorgeous photographs that he readily shares through a wide variety of walks and talks. He also this year developed and carried out a special project to build nest boxes to engage homeowners and help boost local bird populations. This project absolutely took off and was a wonderful effort. Mike's already working on fall programs. We have a lot to look forward to. Mike, I think you're still with us. Congratulations. Thank you so much for everything you do for the 300 committee and for the local wildlife community. We are so lucky to have you with us and we are honored to name you invaluable volunteer for 2021. This time I'll hand the baton back to Alex who will present our next award. Thanks Lucy. This year's Mel Miller recipient is an individual we can rely on for help with any project at the drop of a hat. Bob Lacodara has been an essential part of our coffee cleanup crew last year and has stayed involved and ready to help with the trail crew and specialized work days whenever we've needed him. He's certainly my go-to guy when it comes to steps and his expertise with anything has been so helpful Bob, I thank you so much for your dedication and your energy. We are thrilled to honor you with this award of distinction. I am going to send it back to Lucy for our next award. Thanks, Alex. We have a number of folks who are receiving the Special Places Award this year. Multiple people, a really, really special group who worked hard to make a huge difference during the pandemic. I described earlier the efforts of the, um, this amazing dedicated team 
which resulted in a very well organized and beautifully executed schedule of nearly 80 wayfinding hikes on trail networks across Falmouth in fall, winter, and spring. Thank you so much to all of our walk leaders. Huge, huge thank you for planning and leading these hiking adventures all over town with knowledge, enthusiasm, flexibility, friendliness, you introduced a lot of people to the delights of our many beautiful conservation lands, and we are so, so happy to honor you all this year. You absolutely deserve the Special Places Award. Congratulations. And now I'm going to hand things back to Joanne for our evening's finale. Thank you, uh, Lucy, and thank you, and congratulations to all of our awardees. And now to emphasize the fact that all of you, all of our 300 committee members have contributed to the 300 committee's achievements and deserve awards. Let's take the time to celebrate and raise our glasses to each other. So here's a toast to all of you. And I don't know if you can see me, but I've got a glass here of something cold. So cheers to all of you and thank you. Now, this is the home stretch of our 2021 annual meeting. Uh, and a special thank you to our annual meeting planning committee, our speakers, and a huge shout out, shout out to Tom Stone, who's been running the meeting behind the scenes. <laughs> we'll leave you with a quote on the screen, if I could have the next slide. We'll leave you with a quote from Robert Swan. Robert Swan is a renowned polar explorer who walked to both the North and South Poles. He has made it his mission to save the Antarctic as a natural reserve for science and peace. And his quote is, the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it. We hope that this quote inspires you to say, no, we will save it. So thank you all for meeting tonight to celebrate and congratulations to everyone here on the 36th anniversary of the 300 Committee Land Trust. We couldn't have done it without you and we want you to uh, stay and um, we need you and we need all of us working together to keep our community special. So our meeting is now adjourned and thank you again and we'll see you out on the land. Thank you, Joanne. My pleasure. <laughs> That's it. Good night, everybody.